Hey everybody, Mark Brown here, Chief Demo Pilot for Daher Aerospace, the Kodiak Division. We're here in front of the Kodiak 100 Series 3. We're gonna talk about the cargo pod today. So the anatomy of the cargo pod is it's split into three bays. Each bay has its own door and its own weight limit. Between each bay, there's a small divider. On the top of that divider, there's actually a little bit of room so you can put long things in the cargo pod. The dividers are mostly there to prevent weight shifting from fore to aft in flight. If your Kodiak 100 has TKS as an option, the TKS tank goes in the forward bay of the cargo pod. The interesting thing is the TKS doesn't take away from the total weight you can carry in the pod. So even with the TKS tank in the forward bay of the cargo pod, you still can carry up to 750 pounds of weight in the cargo pod. Another unique feature to the Kodiak 100 cargo pod is the rear bay. The rear bay could have easily just been cut off or not been there at all. It would have been easier to certify. We wanted to utilize as much space as possible, so that rear bay is shaped in a triangular manner. You can put things like skis, fishing poles, surfboards, all in that rear bay. It's an extremely efficient use of space. When you have things you might not want in the cabin of the airplane, things that smell or hazmat style goods, you can throw them in the cargo pod and you don't have to worry about them smelling up your airplane or getting your airplane dirty. Some of the unique features of the Kodiak 100's cargo pod is when you add the cargo pod to the airplane, you don't lose that much speed. You only lose on average one to two knots of true airspeed. That can really be attributed to this forward section of the pod here. You actually have a forward fairing that goes in front of the firewall. On the certification side, that made the certification of the cargo pod extremely complicated, but we didn't want our customers to have to choose between versatility and speed loss. So when you add the cargo pod to the Kodiak 100, you only lose one to two knots of speed and you gain a ton of versatility with the aircraft. One thing that I particularly like about the cargo pod on the Kodiak is you have a large CG envelope to play with. For instance, if I wanted to add, say, two dirt bikes in the rear of the airplane and carry a bunch of people, I have the ability to ballast my airplane in the forward bay of the cargo pod with a lot of heavy equipment. So when you have the cargo pod, you have a large range of CG capability that you otherwise might not have. The Kodiak 100's cargo pod is made out of composite. A unique feature to the composite used for this cargo pod is it can carry heavy, dense items. It can carry up to 65 pounds per square foot, which is unique for most cargo pods. A question we get a lot is, can you add a cargo pod aftermarket? Can you remove it once you have it? The answer is yes. You can add a cargo pod to an airplane that does not have one. You can also take a cargo pod off of an airplane that does. So if you wanted to use your airplane on floats in the summer season and use it with a cargo pod in the winter season, it's certainly possible. There's a lot more to the cargo pod that I won't get into today, but one of the last things I'd like to mention is the refinement of the cargo pod as a whole. Instead of just leaving the fuel sumps inside the cargo pod, we actually routed those to the side of the cargo pod where it's easy to sump the fuel from the outside of the cargo pod so you're not having to stick a sump and potentially spilling fuel inside the cargo bays. So that's a brief overview of the cargo pod on the Kodiak 100 Series 3. It's a great option, adds a ton of versatility, and you don't lose much speed.